it's the big day! My Art Fizz Academia's Members Club is officially open today! If you want to dive much deeper into the behind the scenes of freelancing and monetizing your art business, come over and join us. You'll be part of a loving community where you can connect with other artists, have your members profile to showcase your work, an affiliate system to earn recurring money every month, private one-on-one -on -one art based strategy calls to get individual guidance tailored to your specific needs and unique projects, monthly masterclasses all about monetizing and growing your business, and more. You can join us at myartbaseacademia.com and make sure to watch until the end of the video for a more detailed walkthrough. As this month's masterclass is all about getting started with commissions, finding and keeping clients, I thought it would be interesting to couple this with a video presenting a simple workflow on the more creative side. So here we go! Today I'll introduce you to a workflow I'm still using for commissions and bigger illustrations, which I learned in art class back in my high school days. In Luxembourg, several schools offer specializations for your last three years and I took the arts section. Graphic design was my favorite as we would work on so-called projects as if it were real commissions. We were quite focused on this as it would be our biggest final exam where we would need to create a full project from scratch within five hours. So, in case you're from Luxembourg and want to go to the E section, that's what awaits you. Projects would be divided into two parts, preparation sketches and final product. Out of 60 points, preparations were marked 20 and final product 40, but I think that's now changed to 30-30. This puts way more emphasis on the preparations because this is such an important part. A good illustration, ad poster, whatever will always be carefully prepared and researched beforehand if you want to grab the viewer's attention. So let's break down the whole process. The project we'll use as an example had specific guidelines. Our Luxembourgish National Theatre wants an after advertising poster for the premiere of a new play after Alfred Hitchcock's movie The Birds. Once you have the guidelines, start by just noting down the important elements that need to be in your final illustration. Here it's obviously birds, more specifically ravens or crows, the title and author's name, and the theater's logo. Also important, it's a counter horror movie, so that needs to be reflected as well to immediately set the tone for the public. Now, one of the first things we were always urged to do was doing some research. Depending on the topics, you'll need references to understand how things work so that you can render these realistically or stylize them correctly. Even if you're doing comic, manga or whatever style, you need to understand how things are in reality before you can break the rules. Also, we often think we know how things work, but actually we don't. Seriously, we all know what a car looks like, but how many of us can draw a car that looks realistic and not like a flat box with four circles? Also note that looking up references doesn't give you the right to copy them. There are rights to the photographers on every pic you find, and references are especially tricky for public commissions as they can bring copyright problems to you and your clients. In this example, I've looked up references of ravens to understand the general anatomy and be able to draw them by myself. For the next steps, it will all be about finding ideas, and you can really do that in any order you feel like. The most important elements to consider will be general layout and ideas, typography and colors. In this case, I just started by designing different typographies, which I thought would be suitable for a more gory, dramatical show. I'm always more on the traditional side, but you may as well try out different typos in Photoshop. For the general ideas, I would usually divide a piece of paper in nine rectangles and then sketch whatever comes to my mind. Trying different motives, different colors, placing the title, anything. I think this is really the most important part when trying to set up an illustration and I see lots of my students struggle with this. Really never ever be satisfied with the first idea you come up with. The more ideas you can find, the more you push yourself out of your comfort zone, even if you think that you don't know what to do anymore. That's usually when you'll start getting really creative and come up with things you would never have done if you had just stayed with your very first idea. 
and honestly half of those ideas will probably be total crap but it doesn't matter just put out every single idea you can possibly think of and you'll see which one suits you best among my selection, I like this one best, so I started defining it better. What colors, what technique, I wanted to keep it black and white with red highlights and tried out different patterns for the sky separately. Also, what about the title? Here I had true writings in mind. And you'll see that I read it four times, but really nowadays it's way more effective to just scan it and digitally edit, especially if it's just yeah, copy-pasting some text. And finally, after those preparations, I could just redraw the whole illustration as a big poster, which looked pretty much the same than my small sketch. The preparation is really what will define your whole picture afterwards. If you have clear guidelines, a defined idea on how you will draw it, and know where you'll input all your elements, it will be so much easier and quicker to draw your full illustrations. Lots of beginners create illustrations randomly, erase, redraw, modify, erase again because one object is too much on the left or too small. If you want to be more efficient, especially for bigger projects, promised doing some serious research and prep work will definitely benefit you. Also, in case it's for a client, this helps them visualize much better what a final illustration can look like and also have a good overview of what's going on and what choices can be made. While the birds were completely in my comfort zone and the topic I loved, there were also quite a few projects which made me feel so desperate. And you will probably encounter them too, be it in art school or with real life clients. So I'm adding a second walkthrough of a project I hated to emphasize how important your preparations are. This project was again an advertising poster, this time for the Tour de Luxembourg. Like, you know, like the Tour de France, but for Luxembourg. So first, what elements need to be integrated? Here it was the title, year 2012, Luxembourg, and obviously a bicycle. Again, the process was the same, starting with research. Here, for instance, I have done way more research and sketches as I suck at drawing bicycles, as you can see on my sketches. My realistic ones don't look glorious at all, so I switched to stylizations. I regularly hear people complain about stylizations, how simple that seems, and how that doesn't deserve to be paid a lot, but really, there's so much science and work behind it. If you ever go that way, you absolutely need to understand how the real thing works. Simplifying things with a few lines is an art in itself, because if you take the wrong lines, it will look weird or just unrecognizable. Just look at those two. It looks like a bicycle, but you can feel something's wrong. And yeah, that's because I didn't understand the structure at all, so I couldn't render it truthfully, no matter the style. And it will be the same for you if you don't study your stuff before drawing it. Anyways, on this one I didn't bother with typography separately and just decided to integrate it to the different ideas along the way because I seriously had no idea on what I could do. I decided to stick to black and white again with red, white, blue for the Luxembourg flag and yellow for the Tour de France. As you can see, there are much more diversified ideas than before. And that's the little thing, especially if you're uninspired and don't know what to do, it's even more crucial to just sketch and sketch and sketch until you can't think of anything else anymore. If it's not defined in your contract, try landscape and portrait format, sometimes you get different layout ideas. Some ideas will also look the same, and it's perfectly alright. If an idea suits you, but not 100%, keep on reworking it until you're satisfied. In this case, I like the idea of the big circle, which would act as a frame to emphasize the character, but which could also be a wheel. So I developed that idea and ended up with the strings all around with our national colors, that would also act as dynamic lines as you see in manga, and which would work well with a wheel. Then I tried out some typography variations and here is the final poster. This way of working is perfect for any bigger project you tackle, whether it's for your personal illustration or commission. Of course there will be a topic where you will do more research, others where you will immediately have ideas, 
Those are just general guidelines with the most important steps as we were taught in art school. But of course, you can adapt them according to your needs. So what about you? Are you using a similar workflow or do you just create illustrations after gut feeling? Tell us everything in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for a new video every Tuesday 6pm to grow from art to business. Now if you'd like to see more detailed examples and learn how to price your commission, set up quotes, find and keep clients, then you better join the Academia's Members Club! After months of surveys, research and planning, my Art Biz Academia finally opens its doors with the Members Club and I'm so so excited! The highlight is the course library, where you'll get monthly resources on various art-related topics with all the in-depth, behind-the-scenes tips and insights you need to develop your own art biz. This month is all about getting started with commissions, from smaller gigs to medium-sized commercial commissions. You can watch the whole masterclass in our course player, where you can also track your progress and which allows you to ask direct questions, write about your wins and struggles and interact with other members. For your convenience, the whole course is available both in English and French and you'll get a full printable workbook with all the important points, as well as reference sheets to get clear on your clients and workflow and, well, yeah, to get you completely started. And to dive even deeper, I've also added some real-life project walkthroughs so that you can see what things look like with real clients. Our resources are really designed to save you time and hand you the most useful, concise pieces of info along with easy steps to immediately take action and work towards your goal. And because everyone has unique needs, members can also submit any project for a monthly art biz strategy call. Defining your art style, preparing products for a store or convention, we'll work on this together one on one to define your strategy and get the clarity you need, all during a private coaching session specifically tailored to your own unique needs. Those are really the two pillars of the Academia, as our goal is to offer you all the knowledge and support behind the scenes you need, so that you can create to your heart's content and share your passion with the world. Other perks are also a personal member's profile, where you can showcase your work, advertise, products, social media and whatever you want. An affiliate system where you can earn money every month without lifting a finger. The Academia blog at your disposal whenever you want. And our community system allowing you to connect with like-minded people, support them and be supported in return. Because we're all going through a similar journey, so let's do this together and lift each other up. You can join the members club at myartbizacademia.com and really no strings attached. You can come and go whenever you want. Other mentors from different art industries will join soon and we're doing our best to share and simplify you of trials and errors, studies and experiences to allow you to immediately get started with the most useful and time-saving shortcuts. So if you're ready to monetize your passion and do more with drawing that's just a simple hobby, then we're waiting for you in the Members Club.